Here we're going to have a few examples dealing with our parallel lines and then the angles created um, from the transversal running through those two parallel lines. And in this first example, we're looking for the measure of angle W, which as you notice is going to be right here. And what we really want to do is we want to find what is the measure of that angle. Um, and what we're going to need to do for this one is we are going to need to create another parallel line. So I've put a line in here. I'm going to say that it's parallel to the, f the two that we have. And now what I can do is I can focus on two of the three lines at a time. And the first time I'm going to go through this, and I'm going to look at this line, and I'm going to look at this line, and I'm going to look at this transversal. Let that be my transversal. Now what I notice here is that I have the 120 degree angle. Let's see here. Let's use red. So I have the 120 degree angle, and then I'm going to notice that this angle right here, that would be a consecutive interior angle with the 120 degree angle. Therefore, I know that the two of them together is going to equal 180 degrees. Well, if I get rid of the 120, I just found out that this little angle in here is going to be 60 degrees. That's part of my angle W. Now, let me eliminate a lot of these lines. So let me get rid of that. Now, this time, I'm going to look at this as my line, or these two as my parallel lines, and now this is going to be my transversal. And this time, I'm going to look at the 41 degree angle, and then I notice this angle here is an alternate interior angle with the 41 degree angle. Therefore, I know if the lines are parallel, my alternate interior angles are congruent. Therefore, this is going to be a 41 degree angle. Now, let me get rid of all the blue, and let me try to get rid of this, because it might be a little distracting, and this one. And now I can see that my angle W from the beginning is made up of a 41 degree angle here and a 60 degree angle here. All I'm going to have to do is add those two angles together. So I have 60 degrees, I have my 41 degrees. Add them together, I find out the measure of angle W is 101 degrees. My next one, I have two parallel lines again and a transversal. And I want to find the measure of all eight angles and it only gives me one. So the first way that I'm going to start off is I'm going to start off with something that's n not new. This is not kind of an old concept, but I know that vertical angles are congruent. Therefore, this angle is going to have to be 123 degrees. Now I can go back to my four different uh, theorems from parallel lines cut by transversal. So I'm going to go, well, if lines are parallel, then the alternate interior angles are going to be congruent. So look at this 123 degree angle. This angle here would be the other alternate interior angle with it. Therefore, I know this one's 123 degrees. And then I'm going to go back to my vertical angles being congruent. Therefore, those two have to be congruent. And I know that's 123 degrees. So I have four of the eight angles already taken care of. Now, the next part I'm going to look at is I know that these two angles together are supplementary. Therefore, if one of them's 123 degrees, I can subtract that from 180. And I find out that that's a 57 degree angle right here. Now I can use my properties of parallel lines. I'm going to go with a little different approach this time. I'm going to say, well, I know that if the lines are parallel, alternate interior angles are congruent. So I'm going to use my 57 degree angle here. And then I'm going to come up here and say, well, there's my alternate exterior angle with it. Therefore, this one's going to have to be 57 degrees also. And then from here, I could use my vertical angles are congruent. So this angle and this angle have to be congruent. Therefore, this one's 57 degrees. Same thing's going to happen here with my vertical angles, and I have 57 degree angle. So now I have all eight of them filled in. I've answered my question. Now, there's many other uh, ways that we could have gone about this using the, the different theorems dealing with parallel lines cut by a transversal. Now, this next one's a little bit different. I still want to find all the angle measures, but I start off with uh, some given information. I have the 4x plus 20 degree angle and the 8x minus 60 degree angle. When I look at this, this is something where I want to be able to recognize that I have alternate exterior angles. And I remember that if lines are parallel, the alternate exterior angles are congruent, which means their measures are equal. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to write down exactly what I said. I just told myself that the alternate exterior angle measures 
have to be equal. So if I write them both down, and I write down what I say that they're both equal, well, now I have an equation and I can solve it. So if I subtract, let me do this. Let me add 60 to both sides, because then I can work with positive numbers. And then, then I'm going to have to subtract 4x from both sides, because now my equation is going to tell me that 80 equals 4x. Divide both sides by 4, and I just found out that x is 20. Well, now it's just a matter of plugging it in. Plugging it in. So I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to work with the, with the angle that I think it's going to be easiest to work with. I would rather add than subtract, so I'm going to go to the top angle. I'm going to say, well, I have to take 4 times my x value, which I just found out to be 20, and then add on the 20. So when that's all said and done, I'll go back this way. That's going to come out to be a 100 degree angle. So there's the measure of this top left angle. Well, then the alternate exterior angle is going to also have to be equal in measure. So this one's 100 degrees. And I'll think about what we just did on the last slide. Vertical angles have to be congruent. Therefore, this angle is going to be 100 degrees. And so is this one. So I have 4 of the 8. I can go back then. And I'm going to look at these two angles together have to be supplementary. Well, if one's 100 degrees, 180 minus 100 is going to be 80 degrees. The vertical angles are going to be equal in measure. I'm going to go alternate interior angles. So here's the one part of the alternate interior angle combo. There's the other one. Therefore, this one has to be 80 degrees. And then I can use my vertical angles because I know that they're congruent. And now I have all eight of those angles taken care of. Then I have one more example here. Now on this one, again, parallel lines, cut by a transversal, and I'm going to look at my two angle pairs. I have this angle, and I have this one. Now in this case, we have consecutive interior angles, or we have same side interior angles. This is the one pair of angles that is not congruent. This is the one that's supplementary. So what I have to do in this one is I have to take those two angles, the 3x minus 36, there's the 1, and the 5x, and I just said that they're supplementary, which means when I add their two measures together, it's going to equal 180 degrees. Well, again, I have an equation to solve. So what I'm going to do to start is I'm going to add 36 to both sides to get rid of the constant on the left side, and that leaves me with 8x equal to 216. I'll divide both sides by 8. And when I do that, I find out that x equals 27. Now I can take that and plug it into my two expressions for each angle. Uh, I'm going to just go start with the, the 5x. So if I take 5 and multiply it by my x value, which was 27, I find out that that measure is 135 degrees. So this angle here is 135 degrees. Now to find the measure of my other angle that it gave me in the 3x minus 36, I could plug in 27 in for x and compute that, but I think it's going to be easier just for me to go, well, I know they're supplementary, so I'm going to take 180. I'm going to get rid of that 135 degrees to find out what's left, which is going to leave me at 45 degrees. Therefore, this angle has to be 45 degrees. Then I'm just going to use uh, my vertical angles to figure out pretty much the rest of it. This one's going to have to be 135 degrees. Go vertical angle with this one. This one's going to have to be 45 degrees. And then the, the missing ones that are left, well, the 45 degree angle here with the angle to its left have to be supplementary. I already did. 180 minus 135 is 45, so 180 minus 45 is going to leave me at the 135 degrees. The vertical angles are going to have to be congruent that way. And then when I come down here on the bottom, this angle and the one to its left are supplementary. Therefore, this one has to be 45 degrees. And then the vertical angle with it has to be congruent to it or equal in measure. And there I have it. So I've looked at a few examples dealing with parallel lines uh, cut by transversal and those different angle pairs. Those four theorems are going to be very important. You're going to want to know those, stick those in your head, and know how to use them so that you can write an equation to help you solve problems.